Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and we're going to talk trash. Have you ever had trash talk to you? Well, if you stay with us just for a few minutes, you're going to like it. Michelle Van Dyke, here from the county. We're going to talk trash, right? Absolutely. You're awful pretty girl and <laughs> young for me to talk trash. We're going to talk about solid waste. Maybe we mm -hmm. ought to change it to that, right? <laughs> or garbage and recycling collection. It's interesting because today, and we're shooting this show on the last day of September, mm -hmm. and that's the day, here's how we roll, kicks into be here on the county, correct? That's absolutely true. And this morning, yes. earlier, you were chasing garbage trucks all over the county. Absolutely. Today is a very big day in Hillsborough County. It's something that the county has been working on now since January, and that's to bring automated collection of garbage and recycling to Hillsborough County residents. In fact, Hillsborough County this week uh, joins many, many other communities across not only the state of Florida, but actually in internationally as well in using these carts and automated collection, a, a new way, if you will, of co collecting garbage and recycling. But in Florida alone, more than 9 million residents in cities and counties statewide have already gone to automated recycling. Really? So Hillsborough County is joining the trend. Are there any of the bigger counties that have gone, or is this the biggest county now to go? Well, in fact, there are counties across the state. I think one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest areas that most people know is, is actually our next door neighbor. It's the city of Tampa, which has had um, automated garbage recycling now for some time. But um, it is so there with the test bed here for people to go around and look at. <laughs> well, well, what's been good, and Polk County as well, um, is another neighboring county that has gone to automated collection. Um, so and so there is. There are a lot of communities that we've been able to look across, not only in the state, but across the country to see what worked for them and how we could implement it in Hillsborough County. I know that Sun City Center area and Kings Point have been excluded from today's startup. Are there any other areas in the county that are not going today? Well, uh, absolutely all of the unincorporated Hillsborough County does go into um, effect today. And in fact, since you asked that, there were actually a few neighborhoods that went early. Um, there were about oh. 30,000 residents in scattered neighborhoods, mostly in South Hillsborough County, that actually started automated collection back a few weeks ago, right after Labor Day. Um, one of the service providers asked that, that uh, they do that in order to do some additional training for their drivers and as it turned out it was a great opportunity for us to observe um, kind of in a microcosm sort of way uh, sure. what we knew we could expect countywide when the full implementation happened today. Now since you asked about Kings Point and Sun City Center um, and not uh, going to automated collection today there's a very good reason for that. Um, those, reason, those residents will start automated collection in January. Th those are seasonal community. Um, most residents are, a lot of residents aren't here Up in to 30%. August and aren't here in August yeah, and, and, and that's very important. We didn't, we, uh, because of the very large scale rollout of this program, the roll carts that are used, the gray garbage cart and the blue recycling cart that must be used for the automated collection trucks, we had to start delivering those beginning in August and it's actually we're still delivering them now. Large scales, the big deliveries finished yesterday but we're still delivering them to there are some residents who may not have received one if they'd gotten into a new home for instance um, or they might have been accidentally skipped one card or the other. So if someone uh, but, but did get it, skipped they should call a county? Well, absolutely, but uh, to um, but again, back to the Kings Point and Sun City Center residents, it was very important for them to be able to start their collection in January when more, where more residents will actually be and The post there. office department tells us about 30% of Kings Point and Sun City Center are mm -hmm. not there this time of year. Mm -hmm. They'll start filtering in right after Thanksgiving and you'll have a peak in January. So that's probably a great idea. Well, that's exactly why Hillsborough County worked directly with those two communities to make sure that they were going to get the carts when they were there. And they're getting a different cart, correct? That's true. The standard cart delivery is a 95-gallon cart for garbage. Again, it's a gray cart for, for garbage. And then the blue recycling cart, the standard is 65 gallons. And um, there is a reason those sizes were chosen. They really are the, the benchmark, especially the 95 gallon size for, for automated collection. In addition, uh, residents now in Hillsborough County are allowed to put out three 
32-gallon garbage can. So this the standard size of a garbage can right now, the one that you would go to any hardware store to pick up is about 32 gallons. So residents can put out up to, on their collection day now, their garbage collection days, up to three of those. So that 95 gallon cart size preserves that level of service. It gives them the same level of service. So you've got the benchmark for standard in the industry. Um, you've got that, that same level of service. Um, but also, very, very importantly, all items must fit inside the carts in order to be collected. There's the kicker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are times of the year, there are times when residents generate more garbage, particularly, let's say, over the holidays, when you have more parties, where you're buying gifts and you have lots of packaging for other reasons. Or you have items that you need to dispose of, let's say old decorations, you pull decorations out, they're no longer Big good. Big boxes. Um, and those actually can be recycled now as well. So um, so there is a reason that the, the larger cart size was chosen. So the standard size for most residents is 95 gallons for garbage and 65 gallons for recycling. So if you have anything that won't fit in there, you have to go to a neighbor or wait till next time. <laughs> well, you can either wait till next time or there is another option for disposing of items that don't fit into the cart and we can talk about that. That's called community collection centers. Okay. And there are four community collection centers. Or if you have an item for, for instance, an old couch or chair or a piece of office furniture, something that doesn't fit in there, you don't want to go to a community collection center for free. Residents who are uh, who pay their solid waste disposal assessments on their property taxes can access those centers for free. free. But you can also call your service provider for a bulk pickup for a fee as oh, well. Okay. So they will they will come right to the curb and take away very large items. Um, but there is a fee that you would work out with the service provider. But again, having said that about the size of the carts being the standard, we do recognize that one size doesn't fit all. And that is why Hillsborough County worked up front with some special audiences. For instance, there were approximately 30,000 residents who were either senior citizens or who disabled and received what's called backdoor collection service under the um, or old contracts. Also, there are, as I was saying, there are senior citizens who receive a discount on their solid waste disposal assessment. There were about 30,000 between those two categories that we reached directly out to with a mailer and said, mm -hmm. This may not work for you. Tell us if you want a different size. And then uh, with the Kings Point and the Sun City Center community, we are delivering 35-gallon carts to both of those communities in January. So they will get a 35-gallon gray garbage cart and a 35-gallon blue recycling cart. And we also worked with townhome and condominium communities. We were made aware of, uh, early on in the program that the size of those carts, particularly that 95-gallon cart, was a, was a tight fit, may not fit in, in some small townhomes or condominiums. Right. And so right off the bat, those, those townhomes and condominiums have been delivered 65-gallon containers, one of each. Yeah, I, I would have had an awful time putting 95, two, two big ones in my garage. And, and again, having said that, again, the no, one size doesn't fit all. We are asking that residents do test drive these carts through the holidays. That is a period when people do generate more garbage. Okay. But if it simply doesn't work out for you if, you, if you go through this test drive, just give it a chance and it doesn't work, or there's a special situation, um, and we can talk about more of those as well, um, then in January there will be a free swap out period. So from January 15th to March 15th, you will be able to swap out your cart for a different size. And that includes residents who may have started out with a smaller cart because that's what they wanted, but so decided, oh, I need a larger cart. Um, so there are, there are actually three sizes of carts then. There's the 95, 65, and 35 great garbage carts that as options, and then even the same with recycling. So there's a period you can free swap out, mm -hmm. but after that there's a charge? There's a charge of $30 to swap out. Okay. after that period. But again, January 15th through March 15th, you would just contact your service provider and ask for a different size cart. Okay. You mentioned something about backdoor service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we ought to talk a little bit about. 
Well, absolutely. Um, even though the carts are very easy, as, as the slogan of the, the program um, is fill it, tilt it, and that's how we roll. Um, even though they're very easy to maneuver, they're ergonomically designed so that you just tip them back and roll them, you know, we recognize that there are, there are customers because of physical limitations who just can't handle them. And they can't handle, or they can't handle any kind of regular garbage disposal now, um, let alone with a, an easier way of maneuvering the cart to the curb. And so there is a service available called Backdoor Collection Service. Um, in, it may sound like a misnomer. It may not necessarily be literally a backdoor, but, um, but the term is, is just used for residents who are disabled. There is a form that they can fill out. Um, that the county provides, and then we, if they qualify for this service, then that backdoor service for them is free. Someone will actually come up to their house, take their garbage, take it to the collection trucks, and then put the container back That'd in the house. That'd be very nice. I, I can think of several people that handling any kind of container mm -hmm. with a walker. Well, ab absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely, and that's exactly what that service is for. What other things can we expect with this? Well, I, you know, there are um, quite a few changes, I think, all at once. And one of the uh, big changes as well is um, that this program will save, because of the new collection districts and the competitive bidding, will actually save residents $10 million a year. And if, if you wouldn't mind, maybe I can talk a little bit about the benefits of automated collection. Sure. Um, there actually, I think, may not be some residents who have, have uh, may not be aware of what the term automated collection is, but that's simply where you have a collection vehicle that uses a mechanical arm on the collection vehicle to actually reach out, grab the carts, the robotic arms go around the carts, pull it back, and then tip it into a hopper in the truck, and then it returns the cart right back to where it was placed, instead of workers manually lifting the garbage cans by hand. And it's a, a method of garbage collection and as, as I said earlier, because it is a trend, because it is neater and cleaner for neighborhoods, um, it is greener as well because these collection vehicles, most of them run on uh, compressed natural gas. And you're not going to see the smoke and the, the dark smoke that you might see, the diesel fumes, the diesel smell as these trucks come down the street. They're very quiet. And, and again, they're very clean. Um, and this is also um, much safer for service providers, for the workers who actually have to lift these who have to lift garbage cans by hand. It's a very dangerous profession. It's just not safe. Um, these workers will get rear-ended. They have to handle dangerous materials. They have back injuries. So automated collection, if you think, is, is a very much safer way of, of being collected. The county commission's decision, and, and again, this is a big, a lot of change. This is the, the largest change in garbage and recycling collection in Hillsborough County in 17 years. The decision alone to rebid the contracts that were in place up to now is going to save Hillsborough County more, almost $10 million a year. I mean, 10, almost $10 million a year. That's, that's a lot of money. And that is, as I said, the County Commission made that decision to competitively uh, to rebid those contracts. Uh, part of the competitive or process, bidding process, was to make different collection districts. Instead of three collection districts under the old contract, there are now five collection districts. Well, what does all that all individually bid? All individually bid. Mm -hmm. So, what does that mean to the county? This this way of competitively, this way of dividing up the districts allowed more competition, which allowed for the lower rates, which allowed for the cost savings. Well, what does it mean for residents? What it means for residents is that you may not have the same service provider and you may have a different collection schedule. So um, come today, Monday, September 30th, you also, 75%, approximately three quarters of our residents also have different collection schedules. So if you're used to putting out your garbage and trash and yard waste, uh, let's say on a Monday and Thursday, and now it it's a different. Tuesday and Saturday, that's something that you might have to get used to. Um, also, approximately three quarters of our customers, of the residents, will also have different service providers. Again, because of the, the way that the collection districts were bid. So, so that again is also a change, different, server, uh, different service providers and, and the different schedules. But then there's also some really terrific news about recycling. Um, up till now, as you know, uh, residents have been recycling using a green bin and a blue bin. And 
having to remember what goes in what bin, <laughs> um, having to pick up those bins. By the way, before you go too far, what about those bins? We get to keep oh, them, right? Oh, you can repurpose those bins. If you'd like to keep those bins, you can repurpose those bins. My wife loves boxes, any <laughs> kind of box. Little box, big box. Phyllis just loves boxes. So she gets to keep them? Yep, uh, you can repurpose those at home. Um, if, they're, if you absolutely cannot find a use for those bins at home, then you can take them to a community collection center or just put them into your gray garbage cart as well for disposal. The gray garbage cart, the gray, not in, not not in, in the, the blue. Not in the blue recycling cart, um, but into the gray garbage cart. So as we were talking about recycling, a big change for Hillsborough County will be something called single stream recycling. Again, a trend in the industry, instead of sorting your recyclables, they will all go into that new blue all-in-one cart. And, and I have to tell you, I think there was, a, there was a scene that just epitomized that for me a few months ago as I was driving through a neighborhood on my way to work. And I watched a man who was very neatly dressed in a nice shirt and tie. And he had his arms full of recyclables. And his bins were out by the curb. And he was dropping them every which way on the way from his door to the bins, trying to put them all in, trying to put them in. And I said, you know, if that just doesn't, just doesn't illustrate how easy this program is going to be now, this change, where you have now this very convenient blue recycling cart. You lift up the lid and you toss in all of your recyclables. I never could remember which recyclable went where or whether it was recyclable which at goes, all. Which goes in I the paper. I cap off. Yeah, but you, you can throw the bottle in, but you can't throw the cap in. Well, and or, good news, we have an expanded program, and now you can toss in many more items than you used to, and that includes the caps. Um, but we also take uh, the new program, this expanded recycling program, will take the traditional items that plastics, glass, um, steel, can, or, or what we call food cans, food tins, um, that everyone has been used to saying, I think, you know, uh, Aluminum cans are pretty much a traditional item that has been recycled now for a long time. But it's, any kind of can will come in there, right? Aluminum any kind of or steel can, or whatever. Anything can go in there. Um, but uh, plastics and look through um, one through two has been what this program has taken up to until today. And the great news about this new expanded recycling program is now it takes numbers one through seven. So you just look on the bottom of your container. There is a, a recycling symbol with um, a number in it, and we can take numbers one through seven. Um, in I wonder how many numbers there are. It's, uh, in, in, well, and the interesting part about the one through seven, I think one of the most popular uh, things, or, or I should say most common item, is number six, which is called polystyrene or styrofoam containers. Uh -huh. So food containers that you used to throw in the garbage can, and styrofoam is a brand, uh, but polystyrene is actually the material. Okay. All those food containers now you can put right into your recycling bin. So when I get a Chinese meal that's in one of those containers, I can just throw that in there. Put that in there. You'll want to, you know, you can, you can rinse out your containers. That will keep your recycling cart smelling fresh and clean. Um, and then just toss those right into, again, without bagging. Um, and then, of course, you know, milk jugs are a traditional item, but another item besides the plastics one through seven that can be recycled are gable top con cartons. Um, juice containers, um, aseptic containers, containers like this used to not be taken under the county's recycling program. Well, they are now. And then another great item that I always used to take to a grocery store because they were able to take them, um, but our, the county's <laughs> program did not. Um, plastic bags. We, we, had, we and, had a huge bag of those in mm -hmm. the car that we were going to take back to Publix, I think it was. And it just sat in the car and sat in the car. We never got it back. Finally, we ended up getting it there. But this would be much more convenient. Oh, absolutely. Um, and this, these, these bags, we asked that you actually bundle them together. You said you had a huge bundle in your car. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the way that they should be put into the blue recycling oh, okay. cart. And there's a reason for that. Uh, single stream recycling, uh, as we were saying, it all goes into one cart. And people look at that and they say, well, how can you possibly 
sort all of that. Where is that done? It's not done at the curb. Imagine um, how messy it's going to be when it gets there with all the different stuff in it. Well, there are, uh, it's uh, paper an, boxes. Um, well, and it's an amazing facility. Um, the, and this one is being constructed by or being put together by the service provider directly as part of Hillsborough County's contract with them um, that uses uh, belts and blowers and pulleys and a series of, of mechanisms and some human touch to actually sort all of these materials materials out, wow. bundle them off, and then get them sent to the right place for recycling. And the plastic bags need to be bundled because they don't, they, they, you don't want these caught up in the blowers and the motors. Um, these will easily blow out, but you want these not to blow all over the place. And of course, paper, a big item also that's taken, uh, paper, newspapers, junk mail, cardboard boxes, um, including in the uh, like cereal boxes, you know, the wax paper liner inside a cereal mm -hmm. box, not traditionally something that recycle is recycled. Well, now it is too. You can just throw that right in there with the liner and all. Um, and this, uh, another exciting news about this program is under the uh, old contracts that are no longer in effect, those recyclables, the county received no revenues from those recyclables. They were under the contract, the county paid to have the recyclables taken away and they actually belonged to the service providers and there was a market for that. Mm -hmm. Under this new contract, Hillsborough County will actually receive a share of the revenue well, of nice. the recyclables uh, and, and conservatively we expect at least a million dollars a year to come back to Hillsborough County for, wow. for recycling and that's conservative, conservatively. So it's um, it is a great program and it's just going to be so much easier to recycle than it ever has been. But more reason to be careful and put it all in the box. Absolutely. The county to get the money back. Well, absolutely. And now with the great garbage cart, you know, um, again, to keep your cart smelling fresh and clean, you'll want to bag your garbage before you put it into the great garbage cart. But there are also some things to remember. You know, we, we saw that in our first day, our, our early collection process, and we're seeing that now on our first day of collection about proper positioning of the carts as well. Yes. So how are they positioned? Do, do the homeowners get a... Uh, I don't remember seeing because I'm in Sun mm -hmm. City. So, well, and we so you haven't yet. seen your instruction package yet. <clears throat> That's very good. So there will be a package that mm -hmm. everybody gets? Mm -hmm. Each cart came with an instruction packet, a clear plastic packet, and those carts that you receive in, in Sun City Center and Kings Point will also be this way, that included um, several items. One of them was the uh, what we call the service brochure. Uh, and this particular brochure explains exactly the easy steps one, two, three, four that you're supposed to use to put to correctly position your roll carts by the curb. And then there's some valuable information inside about the community collection centers that we were talking about. Uh, your great garbage cart should be used for garbage, for household garbage. You don't put demolition debris in there, construction debris. You don't put hazardous materials in either of those carts. Um, you don't put hot coals in those carts. So there's a list here of what should go in a cart, what shouldn't go in the carts. And then, then it has information about what to do with yard waste. That's a big, big question as well. And then the uh, household hazardous collection centers as well. What do you do if you have used paint? Um, fluorescent light bulbs. I noticed that would no normally... wine bottles here. <laughs> well, glass is taken. <laughs> Some people might consider those hazardous materials. <laughs> but no, those uh, wine bottles can definitely go into the, uh, into the recycling cart. But the important steps to remember about using the roll carts is proper positioning. They do go right up to the curb. Um, and again, the mechanical arm, that's a mechanical arm, can, can reach out and grab them. Um, very, very importantly, three foot clearance on all sides. Okay, so and that's right there. Mailbox here. or anything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We actually have a, a rule here and where we have uh, three foot clearance, and that is um, between the mailboxes, between other carts. So we saw what we saw this morning a is three, point, three, three foot, foot between carts. Between too. carts. We saw garbage carts and recycling carts, I mean, literally smacked up against each other. They really do need to be have that three foot clearance. And then away from other cars, another thing that I saw a lot with this morning was cars that were parked on the street. Um, garbage, the garbage trucks used to be able to go down the middle of the street with this collection. They do need to be a little closer to the curb. So be kind to your collector and remember to move your vehicle away from the cart when you set them out. Yeah, and that saves a lot of damage on your car. Well, <laughs> well, and and the more importantly, what it is 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 
<clears throat> it will make sure that your garbage gets collected. Because if your cart is being blocked by a car, or uh, by a, either a car or some other obstruction, they're simply not going to be able to collect your garbage. So, and we want to be able to provide good service to you. If, if I don't put it out right, it's too close, too far, whatever, mm -hmm. then the truck just goes on. And uh, there, there will be a learning curve, and we know that there is a learning curve right now, and, and we're all on this. So um, after this learning curve is, is through and we feel like there's been sufficient time, I think, for everybody to realize that proper positioning of the cart, uh, there will be non-collection notices as well. And, and that's what's happening now. What happens is, it, what's happening now is... Wait a minute, there'll be a non-collection what, notice? What's called a non-collection notice. So what would that be? And that would be, that's a tag or a sticker which lets you know why the garbage might not have been picked okay, up. So they're going to get out of the truck, tag the... Tag the, tag the thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and leave it sit there. Um, for this first, first period of time, um, right now they are repositioning the carts and then they're tagging them afterwards because they, they want to be able to provide good service. But as we move through this, we'll have to actually be able to leave the garbage there and just put the non-collection notice on it. And that is, is simply a matter of time. There are, are 260,000 households that need to be serviced. And these carts, it does take time and effort to reposition those carts and to make sure everything's inside. So the other item that we want folks to remember is that everything has to fit inside those carts, again, um, in order to be collected. Uh, and yard waste, another important aspect that we didn't talk about. Um, yard waste can be disposed of in your own boxes and bags and bundles. And, and so nothing's uh, changed there. Nothing has changed, though. That will continue to be picked up manually. So if you have a garbage can right now, um, we encourage you to keep your garbage can and, and actually use it for yard waste or storage purposes around your house, put brooms or rakes in it, um, whatever you need it for. And if you have one that, that simply won't make it anymore, <laughs> um, you can take those to a community collection center or fit those inside your 95-gallon carts. Well, it sounds like you really have your hands full right now. It's, it's a lot of improvements, um, and it's a lot of improvements all at once. But there are so many benefits to automated collection. Big county. <laughs> <laughs> and many counties do roll this out in phases because of the way the contracts were structured. Um, all of the changes here had to be done at once. But, but getting out into the neighborhoods this morning, a lot of people are getting the right word about the proper positioning of the carts, about everything going into the carts, and I have to tell you the difference in what our neighborhoods look like this morning from last week worth all the effort. Is, has been worth all the effort. Michelle, it's been wonderful. Michelle Van Dyke, wonderful to have you on the program. I enjoyed talking trash with you. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure they can call the numbers we're showing. Absolutely. And everybody, you got to cooperate. you got to make it happen. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so, so because you are, you know. We'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. Why should we recycle? To save the earth!